there are stepping stones and there's an exploration and being open and noticing it and trying to kind of glean like what's interesting about this. Welcome to the Midlife Reinvention Podcast, a podcast helping women in career and life transitions achieve clarity on their next steps so they can transform uncertainty into an energizing next chapter. I'm your host, Kavita Ahuja, and the founder of It's My Time Now Coaching. If you're wondering what's next in your career or life, you are in the right place. Through solo and guest episodes, you'll gain practical tips, tools, and inspiration to help you uncover blocks, gain confidence, and be, do, and have what you want. I rediscovered myself after the age of 50, and I know you can too. It's my time now to help you do just that. I'm so excited you're here. Let's dive in. Welcome to another episode of the Midlife Reinvention Podcast. If you're feeling stuck in your career or personal life right now, and are wondering how to navigate the uncertainty of this life transition, this episode is for you. Join me as I speak to Anita Baker, who has navigated multiple industries and personal challenges to find her true calling as an inspiration for you to do the same. In this episode, you will gain practical advice on how to use conversations as tools for personal and professional growth, learn strategies for maintaining resilience and grace through life's most challenging transitions, and discover the importance of reconnecting with your inherent talents and how they can guide your next steps. Tune in now and don't forget to stay till the end for the key takeaways. Welcome everyone to the Midlife Reinvention Podcast, a podcast for people in transition in their careers and life. I interview incredible women for this podcast who share their stories of reinvention and who will give you their advice on how to overcome the obstacles in your way to reach your vision for yourself in your next stage of life. This week, I'm especially excited to have on the show, Anita Baker. Anita recently launched a service called Reveal Talks. These are conversations to help people express themselves, gain clarity, and move forward. It's through conversations that valuable and expressed in ways that probably don't happen otherwise, and that's where they come from. And Anita has used communication in her work in media and technology, marketing consulting, business development, strategy, partnerships, executive recruiting, and startups, as well as helping people through their transition in their life. So welcome to the show, Anita. I, I, there's, you've got such a varied and interesting background, and I'm pleased to have you on the show. How are you? Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Kavita. I'm really excited to talk with you. Yes, me as well. Me as well. I love these and I love the whole thing about conversations. This is this is why I do what I do and what probably what you why do you do what you do as well. So yeah. so Anita, you're as as I mentioned, you've had so many different experiences in your in your life in terms of your working in different industries, media and travel and technology and fashion, et cetera, and marketing and social purpose. And so this podcast is called The Midlife Reinvention. So you've, and you've had many transitions in your life. And so maybe you could just share what those were and some of the through lines, perhaps through all these different transitions that you faced in your life. Yeah. Thank you for that question. When I think about it now, and we can talk about like kind of how I, you know, got here, but part of it is when I look back to see some of the through lines, there are certain things that I'm feeling now that I felt when I was a little girl that I've kind of reconnected with. So I grew up in a small beach town. I was one of those kids that was always like the captain of the team or the head of the cheerleaders or the whatever type of thing. So, and my mom died when I was 13. And so that made a big impact on me in, in a variety of different ways. Here, my family, one thing and the other, went to college at University of Pennsylvania, 
worked in different places. And so there were transitions in terms of leaving the nest, right, and going to going to school, an exploratory phase of did I want to do something internationally? Did I want to do something in business and ended up going to business school? And I got involved in media and technology very, very early on. I go way back. So it was when, excuse me, cable systems were first starting and then interactive services and then consulting and then working for big networks, doing programming and content and partnerships and things of that sort. And then I moved out here when the internet happened because I had over 10 years of working kind of in that field before it actually emerged, which taught right, me a lot. Where's out here? Where's out here? In- oh, I'm sorry. Out here to the Bay Area, San Francisco. <laughs> okay. about that. Clarify. No, that's okay. I've been here, I've been here and back and forth so many times. That's yes. part of my conditions. That sometimes okay. I forget. But in any event, when that happened, so it was an exciting time, and it was a way to apply things that I really enjoyed. And I find in those areas, there's a lot of innovation mm-hmm. and creativity. There are kind of some pieces, some elements that are there, but there's a lot of room in there to kind of figure things out. And what I discovered is that I'm really, and this has been borne out in assessments and all kinds of experience and feedback, that what I really am is a connector and I can sit at the hub of something. And I connection is a kind of curiosity connection and kind of my main thing. And so I'm able to work and see the big vision. I'm able to understand all the different groups, functions that have to kind of come together when I was doing business development and partnerships. So so anyway, so that helped me learn that I could learn enough about the technical, enough about the product marketing, and communicate and pull all of those kinds of things together and also do the details. So that was part of the transition was kind of understanding that that's one of the core things. We, over time, through different kinds of experiences, different kinds of work projects, different kinds of conversations, different kinds of settings that kind of start to give us a context for what that looks like and I think is part of the basis for do for doing some of the next things. I worked in digital ad sales. And then I decided, and then when I when I was working for a company, a startup company that was born out of Stanford by some MBAs and PhDs in environmental engineering. It was called Whole Travel. And it was an e-commerce company, the first one really focused on travel to destinations that were ranked for sustainability. Uh-huh. So that means sustainability, conservation of the of the land, the culture, how can you sustain the economy and help grow it? So mm-hmm. all of the aspects of conserving what's really yeah. important right, yeah. and long, long-lasting. And so that got me an interest, too, in, on that area. And I work with Sustainable Brands Conference and other things. So that was another piece that kind of got laid in, that that was something that then came into my world, which yeah. I hadn't before. And when the downturn happened, I moved to Connecticut and did some work there and kind of thought about a lot of things. And then I moved back to the Bay Area in 2015, worked for Microsoft. And then I just decided that I really, really needed a change. And also, I was feeling kind of stagnant in what I was doing. A lot of people had moved away. The industry had shifted a lot. I wasn't married. I didn't have kids. I didn't have a family that was burgeoning. I wasn't retiring like a lot of my friends were. So it was really this whole thing of I need stimulation, mm-hmm. curiosity, and cultures, all of those kinds of things to bring in in order to stimulate me again. And also at that time, I had a diagnosis that my kidney was in failure zone. So if I wanted to do anything oh spontaneous, if I yeah. wanted to travel, I better do it then. So mm-hmm. I did that for 11 months. I went to about a dozen different countries and had some very emotional experiences, some of which are around energy and spirituality. That, so that was a transition. Mm-hmm. Came back service for women 50 plus traveling solo. And then I really had to focus on solving this kidney issue. Mm-hmm. And during COVID, what kind of all coincided and as horrible as COVID was and the things that were going on at that time, it also gave me a time to sit back and reflect. I had a lot of things I needed to focus on. I had a lot of things I needed to let go of. I had to solve an awful lot of different things. So that was a transitional aspect as well and a really, really critical one. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, the transplant have pivoted around a number of different things and through different communities and conversations and assessments and doing the work and testing things, I've really come back to it's around con- these kinds of conversations that have showed up in my life. And if you look at my second grade report card, it's all there, all of it. So this idea of covering your inherent talents 
right? And then how they show up along the way and what kind of gets in the way, really, I think, inform transitions. So that's a long-winded, hopeful description. No, of- that's great. Thank you for sharing. I mean, I, 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 I love that because I always look, whenever I have these conversations with, with guests such as yourself, it's interesting to see that as, even if we're having so many different experiences in our life, there's this connection. And, and you mentioned that you realize that you're a connector and that you have the big vision. And if we, as women, especially, if we understand and really reflect on all our great strengths that we have accumulated, then that really forms the basis of us moving forward with confidence, right? We celebrate our successes, celebrate our strengths. And then the the triggers that you had, and I mean, that kidney trap transplant was a big one. Maybe you've overcome that. And then, of course, with COVID, as we all did, it's a time for reflection. And, and it's wonderful that you've been able to take those, I guess, the through lines and and move forward. And, and, and as I, I would say, celebrate all the great things about you, which is what I try to with my clients as well. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, the other thing was when you mentioned about as a child, like if you look at back at what you were used to enjoy when you were a kid, the passionate things that you enjoy doing, oftentimes it's like, oh, wow, it comes back full circle. And <laughs> So I also understand, Anita, that you went on a, a bit of a spiritual journey. Right. And that's, I think, after you said you had your, your transplant. Yeah, I had my transplant. It actually happened when I was 67. I'm 70 now. Okay. And this journey when I was when I, that I went traveling on my own, which, excuse me, led to the spiritual journey. Yeah, I started when I was 60, right? Yeah. And I was traveling. I went to Israel and I went to Europe and I went to Bali and Malaysia and all of these different, Australia, all these different places. And mm-hmm. by the time I flew from Paris to uh, Sydney, which I don't recommend for anybody. It was a 36-hour flight. Anyway, yeah. but why did I do it to myself? So I was like museums and art and all of that. So I was getting expansive in that way. And kind of spending time with myself, I remember being in Israel, they had these amazing breakfasts. So I would sit there for two hours, you know, and write in my journal and on my computer. And so I lost a lot of that. But nonetheless, so it kind of started out in that way. And then I ended up in Australia being super tired and fatigued and couldn't make a decision. Went to see a doctor there in Melbourne who said, oh, go to this place called Byron Bay. I've never been there, but I heard it's holistic and it's wonderful for healing and and all of that. Took a bus, got off. In front of me was a place, I forget the name of it, but they did all kinds of energy healing, mm-hmm. and different kinds of massages, and all of these different kinds of modalities to bring in. And then there was a store across the way that they said, go get more magnesium. You need more magnesium. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the beginning of it. In Byron Bay, there's a place called the Crystal Palace, which has the largest concentration of crystals anywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. And this me was absolutely astonishing. So I started to understand more about energy as a result of that. And there was a woman at this place that did Reiki on me. And so she was reading my energy pattern. So I got very attuned to what that meant. Mm-hmm. And I am in Thailand and I was in Bangkok and I was sitting in a one of those, I don't know if you've ever been there or not, but they have like an old- It during February. And you were, okay. So maybe, maybe they did the same thing. There are yeah. these like the old section- and you can sit outside and, you know, you can buy pants for $300. Yeah. And I was, and that you can get these foot massages outside. Yeah. Yes. And I was next, next, right? They're amazing for $25, a foot massage yeah. amount. Of, you know, yes. It was the best thing. Uh-huh. And so somebody that I was sitting next to told me about a place called the Sanctuary, which was an island on Koh Phanyan, which is kind of like a jungly island across from Koh Samui. So I went there. And that really opened me up to a lot of different kinds of holistic and spiritual experiences. I did a detox. I did a, a workshop where we did tapping. I did a whole lot of different things. And one of the things that happened was I had a massage and the person I was telling her about my kidney, because I'm in kidney failure territory at that moment, right? And she does, and she talks about it as being my life force. Mm-hmm. One of those things that I held on to, and it's that that's my life force and that's what I'm going to solve, right? And that is going to give me a different kind of energy and outlook, you mm-hmm. know, for the... And then I did some other kinds of things. I went to a monastery, like one of those 10-day silent retreat types of things. I only lasted three days. But anyway, but that became part of the spiritual journey. And then coming back, I was opened up to things. So I started to do meditation. 
during COVID, Wisdom 2.0 and John Kabat-Zinn did this whole mediation, which ended up being 13 weeks, two, two hours every day, Monday through Friday. So that opened me up to learning and writing and journaling and really thinking about the importance of letting things go. I a lot of things locked up in me, a lot of it related to my mother's death, but other kinds of things as well. Mm-hmm. And it needed some way to dissolve, to create space. Yes. And then yeah. I went to the, to the Modern Elder Academy. And so it was just a variety of different kinds of experiences that kind of led to this spiritual thing. So it started kind of unexpectedly in these travels, and then it has continued. Yeah, I mean, I'm a core energy coach. So what, what, what that means is really, I, I completely believe in the energy that connects us all. And when you you meet, you met that lady in, in Thailand, and there was a reason you met her. It, it took you to, and I, by the way, I was in Tosamui as well at a wellness retort, retreat, and I know exactly what you're saying. It's just, it's this feeling of like complete peace, and uh, mm. there's this energy there that's indescribable. So, I would recommend that for for many people who are maybe not going to Thailand, but at least being able to tap into that inner energy, and that, as you said, it opens up things for you that you may not have. And letting go of things that maybe you didn't even know were there. So that's really important. As we progress and maybe we just get so caught up in life and we don't take a moment or a few minutes a day even to just stop and breathe and listen to ourselves. Yeah. So oftentimes when I am coaching women and when I meet women come to me and it's, you know, well, I have so many different, I have had so many experiences like you've had and I, I just really don't know what to do, what direction to take, and where do I even start, right? I have an idea based on my experience, but just wanted to get your perspective on how do you even know, like, what do you want to, what direction to take and when you're in a transition phase? Yeah, it's such a mix of things. As as a yoga teacher, who's also an energy healer, one of the teachers there is woman, Raina. She's like one of those, like, she's probably an angel who's now on the earth. She has that same kind of radiant energy and and warmth and empathy. And so I used to do a Hatha yoga class with her on Sunday mornings. And I came back from one of one of my travels. She said that she could sense my energy had shifted. Mm. And one of the things that she said to me, and I, I think I told you that there are certain visuals that I've had that told me something that kind of already stayed with me, that kind of informed me or I kind of connected to. But one of the things she said is like, think of it like a river. Think of it like a gentle river. And that you kind of go along and there's a stepping stone. And you go, oh, that's an interesting stepping stone. Mm-hmm. Let me sit there for a while and feel within, what's in that universe and kind of connect with people from there. I tend to learn the best and engage and incorporate more through having conversation and meeting people and then having space to reflect. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so I did that. And it also helped me realize, because I'm generally not a linear person, I can backtrack and do things linearly. But it's generally, I have to kind of go and experience things. And I think for a lot of people who are going through transitions, there's a desire to kind of say, oh, if I do step this, 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 I'll get there. In my experience, that's really not what it's like. Mm -hmm. Now, at the same time, I sought out a lot of different things, right? Mm -hmm. I did, I know, I did these, you know, I I traveled, I talked to people. Mm -hmm. I went back to people that I had known, particularly during COVID, and talked about our experiences together and what was their experience of me, like my yes. college roommate. So talking to different people to kind of get a sense of like how they experience me, like what do they pick up? Where are the similarities? Where are the differences? And what was I doing at mm-hmm. that time? So that was kind of good because again, that was part of the letting go process. And when you have space, then something else can come in, right? And there's an opportunity for reframing. There's mm-hmm. an opportunity to develop a new perspective about it. When you sit with something, you can kind of work noticing it in your body. One of the things I did was have a session with an energy healer. And I actually found kind of the visual that she drew for me as a result of that. So she read and I could see where I was open, where I was closed. It kind of informed me of those steps. And then I did things like the Modern Elder Academy, which is a wisdom school, but it's really all about life transitions. Yes. I ivory community. I did assessments. And then I also experimented a lot. When I got out of the hospital, I did a workshop that just, I was a company I was working with and I did a writing workshop, which was great because it started three days after I got back and I couldn't get out of bed anyway. So it was absolutely, there I was in my pajamas with this workshop. Wow. 
but it caught me kind of into like, oh, I really love to write. Mm -hmm. And so I started using that. And so I started connecting into things that really gave me joy, Mm -hmm. that allowed me to be in flow. And so again, it was just all of these like little pieces of things, but I was really out there, right? I was open. Mm -hmm. I was exploring. I was seeking out. I was making connections. Mm -hmm. And again, working with this company, we started to do like interviews, like in short conversations Mm -hmm. and video and all of these different things. So that was informing as well. So I guess my point is that, that there are stepping stones and there's an exploration and being open and noticing it and trying to kind of glean like what's interesting about this. Yes. And then, and I think that's also energetic. I think when you put your vibrations out, when you put your energy out. Yeah. Thing no, the universe knows. Yeah. Right? And I'm happy to trust those things. And but there's also that awareness because if I wasn't aware, I wouldn't have known that I was that this was yeah. important. I wouldn't have felt that that was important. Yeah. Such great advice. I love that analogy with the river and the stepping stones because it is not a straight line. It's certainly not a straight line. We can't expect to go do one thing and then the next and the next and boom, the answer is there. It has to be, as you said, whatever you do. If you do it and it feels good and there's joy and flow, as you said, then then that's the right path, right? And then there might be deviations. It generally, I, I believe it's the feeling you have. And that's what how I've kind of led my life. And that's why I left, for example, my corporate work, even though at that time it was joyful and flowing. But then life changes. You, you change as individuals. And if you don't respond to what your heart and body is telling you, then you're going to be unhappy. You're going to be stuck, right? So it's really about that flow and, and ease. And yeah, that's 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 great advice. So it seems as though the, the, this, this, these stepping stones have led you to what you're doing now, which is reveal talks. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what, what exactly that is. What do you do? How do you help people? Well, as I said, I've had these broad experiences. Well, my own life, working with people through transitions, recruiting, all of those kinds of things. And so, and I'm a good listener, right? I ask good questions. Mm-hmm. I asked, I act as a, a thought partner, a sounding board, an experienced resource, and I'm highly collaborative. And so I would like to help people kind of refine a business idea or open up a different way. And mm-hmm. then I can help them do business development or create a communication program. What's interesting is I've talked to people about what I'm doing. What I hear back is like, oh, I need X. And it's like, oh, I didn't necessarily think of that. But you're seeing that in me. So, yeah, I could do that. I could coach that executive on how to tell a story better and think about his audience. It's not my primary thing. I wasn't trained as a communication coach. Mm -hmm. But that set of experiences and the way that I related opened it up. So there's a series of different things. Sometimes all you really need, you're feeling a little stuck. And all you really need is somebody to just talk things through with. So just talking it through. And hearing what somebody says and saying, this is what I'm hearing, or have you thought about this, or practical. I think a lot of things, and I I think you do this in your work too, is this, there's a a generally an internal and external piece that they're kind of coming into play all the time. Yeah. So I see those connections really quickly. It's just the way my mind works. And fortunately, as you get older, it it gets closer. So it's kind of like, that's good for me. Guess one thing new and technical, forget it. But those kinds of things. Yeah. So helping someone. So it can be as simple as one conversation. It's really what emerges in conversation, which is kind of how we started out with the introduction. You mm-hmm. have a conversation with somebody and you have a sense it's about, but something gets uncovered, something gets revealed. Yeah. Maybe there's an aha moment. Or, yeah, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. And what emerges is, all right, we'll go. So it can be a series of conversations. Sometimes a company needs an outside perspective, a neutral perspective. And because I've worked at different levels of company and with all the different functions and I'm good and in consulting a lot of times I had to do a lot of interviews and then kind of feedback what the highlights were and the different yeah. path. I grew up always wanting to be the next Barbara Walters. I just thought yeah. she just fit in and poise yeah. could talk to anybody in the world about anything and travel and learn so much. And I'm highly curious. I love learning. As I said, I do it that way. So so those are the those are the basic services. It can be a one hour conversation. That's all you need. You know, great. Could be a series of them. It could be a project or consulting assignment. Uh-huh. Which are starting. And then it can also be a more public conversation. Wow. That's a really very unique. It's the kind of the combination of I would say consulting, coaching, uh, mentoring, 
all in one. He said you're a thought partner. It's like elements of all of it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, well, that's what you got from what you've been a coaching so patient. I don't want to do that. Yeah. You know, there are other people like you who are much better at that. But it has elements of it. Yeah. You're saying it elements of mentoring. It has elements yeah. of helping somebody think through a business this idea. Yeah. Be, well, I love business development, really tuned into yeah. helping people grow their businesses. Wonderful. That's what really needed, I think. Oftentimes, people will just talk at each other, not with each other. They won't learn and listen, and they'll talk, but they won't listen. So this really opens up, especially in corporations. I think that's really important from, from what you're saying. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure you've you've spoken with many people who there there's a lot of challenges that happen when we're going through any kind of transitions, whether it's career or any kind of life. I mean, you've certainly had your share of them with your health, for example, and maybe just one or two things about one or three tips about how can we move through these challenges, like with ease and grace, perhaps. Hi, my friend, Kavita here. Do you often feel blocked from moving forward? We all feel that way at times. These are referred to as energy blocks. I've created a short, actionable PDF guide to help you release your negative energy blocks. Click the link in the description to download it now for free. Now, let's get back to the episode. Yeah, just a few things. I think realizing that you've been through difficult things before and you can do it again. Mm -hmm. That uncertainty is inherent in everything, whether it's good uncertainty or bad uncertainty. And to kind of accept that, I think taking care of yourself in the sense of creating space, exercising, eating properly, because I think that your state of being, like you have to work on this part before these other kinds of things can kind of move in the direction that you want, because we can filter things through something that it doesn't serve us, mm -hmm. right? Think about energy. Is this something that enhances my energy or depletes my energy, right? My nervous system. I think about that a lot. Social connection, finding communities, finding people that you can safely talk to, even engaging with the person, you know, down the street or the person in the grocery store going COVID became like my everyday kind of buddy. But it, it filled me up even just if it, if it was a minute conversation. Mm -hmm. I live surrounded by nature. So I think persistence, advocating for yourself, kind of having a sense of where you're going or at least be, and, but being open to that muddle, but doing things. Right. Even if it's a tiny, tiny little step, just take one step. It's an action. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you in a different place that you can then build from. And I think give yourself a lot of grace and also be practical but at the same time. So there's a lot of different dimensions, I think, that come yeah. into it. But I think that level of being practical, yes, not being limited by what you see, because there are possibilities, but certain possibilities that are kind of out there. So I think taking that stock of Everything yeah. should be. Those are great. I mean, creating space, energy, whether it's depleted or not, the connections, persistence, action, all those things are so important because we often forget. And like, again, going back to stopping and just seeing, you know, is this, is this place I'm in the right place? Do, how do I feel about it? And not just pushing through because you think you should. <laughs> well, I'm pushing through so it tends to go along the same path that you are already on. Yeah. And in a sense, you know, you want to you want to point. elevate. Yes, yes, yes. I'm you sure. want to elevate it. You want it to just change enough. Right. Yes. That it, uh, 100%. Uh, yes. Wonderful tips. But there's one thing that you said to me when we met when uh, you had said that, which kind of stuck to me. And you said that we are all the ages we have ever been. Right. And that kind of stuck to me. And I think that's really an interesting thing. That means to me that Everything that we've done in our life has accumulated to the point where we are now. So maybe get your perspective. On that. I think that's true. I mean, it's it's a journey and we are the total of our experiences and our choices and who we inherently are. I don't know if you know Dr. Keltner, who wrote um, the book about awe. And I saw him at Book Passage and he was talking about your soul. And I would say, I've always been one of those amorphous kind of things to me. And he said... It's the soul is kind of like what's the essence of you, and then how you find meaning with it, and then put that meaning out in the world. So I think there is something that's core that we come into the world with that has to be nurtured. Obviously, if, you know your your life circumstances and that kind of thing. 
But as I said, I remember when I was a baby, what I looked like when I talked, what my kindergarten experience was like when I was the captain of the softball team. And I didn't even know I was the last one picked for the team because I was always picked by the boys to do things. And then I was the most improved player and the most valuable player, but I had no idea. I just kind of did it. So there was a persistence and there was an openness mm -hmm. to improving. The things I had in college, the relationships, this whole experience of traveling, this whole experience of really being in a bad place when I was 60, and fortunately through this arc of the decade. So I think, yeah, so I think if you go back and look at yourself and kind of really look at who you are and embrace it, this, these were the anxieties that I had. This was the moment that I was in. So as you said, as you started to say so beautifully, when you asked me the question, we are the sum total of our experiences and we can make choices. Mm -hmm. We're in awareness. So, yeah. But I think some of the charge of the things that were very distressing for me or that put me in a bad state for a long time or that I felt I was struggling with on my own, I've kind of lost the attachment to that. And I don't know. I just I feel much lighter. It's not that they weren't there and they didn't inform who I am now, but I feel really differently. I almost forgot that I went through yeah. all of that because this is the place where I'm in now. I'm really enjoying it. But I wouldn't have gotten to this place had I not been right. all of those ages. Well, you just said some amazing words like that you embraced everything that you went through. And that's what we should do. We should embrace it. And even the good, good, bad and ugly. I guess. It's like all the all the learning from the struggles. And when you do that, then, like you said, you you just why did that happen? It's like the ha everything happens for a reason and happened. And now you're feeling lighter and now you're giving back to people to be able to recognize that in one another. So, yeah, I think it's giving agency to that. It's and then there's one thing and I kind of got this from the meditation stuff, but I always think of it. But this whole idea of remember Star Trek resistance is futile. Yeah. And so when I think about that, this opening up, you can recognize it, you can kind of accept it, but it goes beyond that. Like the resistance, this is not working, right? Something else has to kind of open up, you know, otherwise it's yeah. like this. Yeah. So that's a part of it. Resistance is futile. Yeah. Just open up to the possibilities and take the steps and yeah. let it lead where you are, but be, but be mindful and intentional about you're doing that. I love that resistance, you know, <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Anita. I really appreciate this. It was, a, it was a really enlightening conversation. It was easy. And I think our listeners are going to learn a lot from, from your ex vast experience. And perhaps uh, just in ending, you can just let us know where people can find you if they want to no learn more about Reveal Talks. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So my email is info at revealtalks.com. Okay. That's, that would be the best way. And, you know, please, anybody, you know, who is, who's interested in talking with me about anything, you know, please do reach, do reach out. Yes. Um, but thank you so much for this time. Kimberly. This has been fabulous. It's been so much fun. And I do hope that what we talked about touches somebody or gives somebody a nugget, you know, something that's meaningful that they can take. I, I, I absolutely believe that will happen. Uh, and whoever's mm -hmm. meant to hear whatever they're meant to hear is, is going to resonate with them. So this is why I have these conversations and I believe that's why you have your reveal talks as well. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I trust you enjoyed this episode and how Anita Baker's journey exemplifies the power of embracing life's transitions through the power of conversations, community, and self-discovery. Here are her key takeaways. Number one, Use conversation as a tool for clarity and growth. Don't underestimate the power of talking things through as a means to achieve clarity and direction in your life. Number two, recognize and harness your core strengths. Understanding what you're naturally excel at can provide a solid foundation for your reinvention journey. Number three, stay open to exploration and not linear paths. Allow yourself to follow your curiosity and intuition, as this can lead to unexpected and fulfilling discoveries. And number four, prioritize self-care and connection. Maintain your well-being through self-care practices such as exercise, healthy eating, and mindfulness. Foster social connections and seek out supportive communities. 
If you're feeling stuck currently in your career and life and feel like you don't have any other choice but to stay where you are, I have a brand new and very quick and simple quiz which will quantify for you what your satisfaction level is in your, cur- in your career and life right now. By taking this career and life fulfillment quiz, which will take less than a minute to complete, it will help you give you, it will give you a really clear understanding of what's holding you back and help you move confidently towards your goals. Click the link now in the show notes, which will take you to this short quiz and provide you with valuable information, which will help you right now. Thank you for listening. I don't take it lightly that you're here. And I wish you health, happiness, and a wonderful, wonderful week ahead.